This is DJI Air 2S. This tiny drone has Sony's famous 20 megapixel 1 inch CMOS sensor. It can shoot up to 5.4K 30, 4K 60 video in standard, 10 bit D log, and Rec 2020 HLG mode. It can shoot JPEG, RAW, and HDR photos. Thanks to the Active Track 4, A Pass 4, downward, backward, forward, and upward sensors, it can track and follow you much better than all other DJI drones. The new Spotlight 2.0 lets you create buttery smooth footage. It weighs less than 600 grams, has 12 km range, 31 minute flight time, and it is surprisingly quiet. So I guess the question is, is this tiny bird any good? And here it is, DJI Air 2S Fly More Combo comes in this nicely designed box. Inside the box we're greeted with a shoulder bag, some papers, a lot of extra propellers, ND filters, USB-C and micro USB cable to connect your phone to the remote controller, lightning cable is already on the remote, extra control sticks and USB-A to USB-C cable. Inside the bag we're greeted with Air 2S itself, the remote, battery charging hub, extra batteries, charging brick and this to convert your drone battery to an external charger. And that's pretty much it. Just like all DJI drones, Air 2S is a good looking drone as well. The upward sensors give this drone a VW bug meets future kind of feeling. Almost like the flying cars in 5th element. And I like that a lot. Well, this is how far the drones have come. In 2016, if you wanted to carry around a consumer drone with one inch sensor, you had to carry around Phantom 4 Pro, which was 1.4 kilograms, not including extra batteries or the remote. It had 7 km range and it flew for 30 minutes. In 2018, we had Mavic 2 Pro, which was less than a kilo, had 8 km range and flew for 30 31 minutes. This guy, on the other hand, with its glorious 20 megapixel 1 inch Sony sensor, weighs less than 600 grams. I mean, look at the size of this, can fly for 31 minutes and has 12 km range. Not just that, this is possibly the easiest drone to fly. It is the most stable DJI drone I've ever seen and it is super quiet especially while it's moving. Even if this is your first drone, even if this is your first time flying, first of all welcome to the club, please be careful and respectful. You can put this drone in, in the air, select your subject and hit master shots and this drone will fly around that subject and does its own tricks and then puts them <laughs> into an edited video with music and graphics on top of it and saves it into your phone and you can share it immediately. You can also go through the templates and pick another edit as well. Years of flying drones, learning to, you know, get those cinematic shots. And this guy comes along and does it all by itself. Actually, if you don't know what you can do with a drone, if you don't know what kind of shots you can get, you can watch the drone doing it and then learn them and then make it your own. And if you've been flying drones for a while and if you want something you can carry around easier, 
you may want to look into this guy. With Phantom 4 Pro, you had to get that gigantic bag and then you had to carry those gigantic batteries with the remote. And with Mavic, that became easier. Smaller drone, lighter drone, but then the little guys arrived, Spark, Mavic Mini, Mavic Air. So then the question became, should I carry a drone that is going to give me a really good looking footage or should I carry a drone with me that is super easy to put it in my bag? And for me, having all these cameras and lenses in my bag, I wanted to get a drone that is lighter. That's what I preferred. But with this, all of that is combined, especially with 5.4K 30 frames per second video, D-Log, HLG, BT2020, you can change the filters, you can add ND filters as you like. You can get a really good looking footage and this fits into your bag easily. Also a smaller drone means less attention. And in case you don't know why you may need ND filters, ND filters are basically sunglasses for your camera. If there's too much light outside, you need to put on an ND filter to keep the shutter speed and aperture in control. Otherwise, the shutter speed has to go up in order to compensate for the light, which may take away the blur that we love. You don't have to, but if you want something that looks cinematic, you may prefer it. Also, if you shoot in 5.4K and then you scale it down to 4K, even in 1080p, you're going to get better looking footage without adding artificial sharpening. Which brings us to digital zoom. This thing can perform digital zoom, which is different than a digital zoom you can apply during post. Because when you apply digital zoom during post, you're just scaling into the image and probably adding sharpening. And that's probably going to look bad, especially compared to this. How this drone zooms in is by using its sensor. 20 megapixels is way too much for 4K footage. All you need is 8.5 megapixels. So what this drone normally does is it uses its entire sensor, shoots the video and then downscales it to 4K, which gives you a sharper looking image without adding sharpening. But what you can do is you can use less area of the sensor, which means you're going to get a zoomed in footage because you're cutting out the sides and then downscale that to 4K. And there you have a digital zoom without losing quality. So in a way, this drone is Mavic 2 Pro and Mavic 2 Zoom in one smaller drone. And a zoomed in footage is a lot of fun if you want to get that compressed look. This drone also has Active Track 4 and it is without a doubt the best Active Track <laughs> on a DJI drone. I've been running around here trying to get this drone to lose me. It never did. This upward sensors helps the drone understand what's above it. So it flies better when you're running under the trees. If you remember with Mavic 2 Pro while I was running under the tree, Mavic was kind of gardening that tree's leaves. This one just goes lower, doesn't even touch the leaves and can follow you a lot better. Also the prediction is better as well. So if you run out of frame, the, the idea this drone has where you may have gone is better compared to any other DJI drones I've ever seen. Yep, 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 come on, come on. POI is really good as well. You select your subject and the drone starts rotating around it depending on the speed and the direction you choose. But I think one feature that is not talked about enough is spotlight. Spotlight is on this drone is just on another level. You select your subject and wherever you fly, you, you're in control of flying the drone it locks in to that subject and lets you create almost 3D render like looking footage. And even if it loses the subject, it drops a pin where the subject is and just keeps on looking there. It's so good. So you can hide behind a tree, get a revealing shot of something and fly around it as you wish. And this drone will keep that thing centered in a really nice cinematic way. 
And that, this goes for tracking as well. When this drone was tracking me, it was also keeping me really nicely in the center of the frame. It's not like I'm at one corner of the frame at one second and at another corner of the frame in the next, which I think is very important when it comes to tracking. Now let's talk about things I didn't like. Smart features and zoom gets turned off uh, anything above 30 frames per second regardless of the resolution. So if you like to track a lighthouse in 60 frames per second and get that amazing looking footage in slow motion, that's not possible yet. Also, there is a 30% crop when you switch to anything about 30 frames per second. It's not a deal breaker, but you have to consider it and plan your shot accordingly before putting this drone in the air. Now the user interface may use a little polishing, especially autofocus and zoom buttons are really close to each other and every once in a while, especially you're looking up, you're following the drone, you're looking down, you're doing a lot of stuff and when you tap on it, you may tap on the wrong button. And the last thing I wish this did have a variable aperture. Okay, I'm done complaining. Also, this drone has AirSense. AirSense is a really useful feature. Whenever there is an aircraft around you, it shows you on the app, it shows where the aircraft is, so you lower down your drone and get out of their way. In the app, the battery indicator shows you more than just how much battery is left. Orange indicates until return home, let's say if you're really far away, and the red indicates until forced landing which is really good to see. And then they change as you're flying around. If you go too far, they get bigger. If you come close, they get smaller. Very clever way to know what you can do with the battery on your drone. In the end, Air 2S is a drone that has it all. It's the one drone you need. It is small, it is portable. It records up to 5.4K. Also, it is so calming and nice to fly this drone. It just sits in the sky and it does whatever you want it to do. Maybe after 2020, that means more to me, but I really enjoyed flying this drone. That calmness, that beautiful footage you get out of this drone is fantastic. It's what you expect from a DJI drone and some more. This is ridiculous. <laughs>